Russ, we of course saw the the play and that Collins gets the flag or two and you know, the blood. You get, go to the back and get to stop it. Just, how was your head feeling? You're able to come into the game. How, how was that whole couple minutes for you? Yeah, it was it was fine. It was quick. Uh, doctor looked at it and closed it up and came back out. Two straight wins, uh, this third and four games against the Spurs, uh, Russ. Uh, this one without AD. Uh, what did you see as uh, as any kind of theme to how you guys were able to start stacking some wins here the last week or so? Um, important part is um, you know win games that you know we're supposed to win when we got bigger things and aspirations as a team. I think that's the most important part you can take from it. What I'm curious about, Russ, is I, I know why Zach was ejected. But why were you called for a technical foul? Did they explain that to you, uh, no, the reason behind uh, it? I was confused on that one myself. I wasn't uh, sure why um, I got one, but I'll you know, check with the league and, and, and talk to them about it and, and figure out you know, why that was. Maybe, maybe because I probably hopped up or something, I'm not sure. But I, I ain't talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I called too fast or something. I don't know. But I'm going to check and find out. You know, Russ, you, you mentioned getting up, and uh, you looked like you were pretty upset with Zach, obviously. Uh, but your teammates kind of got you, and LeBron got the towel on you. Did you feel like they were keeping an eye out for you in that moment and, and trying to keep that from escalating? Uh, probably so. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Um, you know, uh, initially reaction, obviously, is to hop up and kind of see what's going on. But obviously now, once I'm bleeding all over the place, kind of calm down and take care of that and kind of move forward. And then, uh, you know, you had that, I believe, in the second corner, the, the double lob. I don't think we see that very much. Uh, could you talk about that play and the connection with LeBron there? Uh, yeah, you know, he's always, uh, LeBron is, you know, well known as always trailing. So um, just me knowing that, being able to make that read and, and put the pass where he can be able to, you know, finish. Right now, he's good and fine. I want to ask because of the concussion. Oh, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, I wouldn't have came back if I wasn't feeling fine. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. So, a different game tonight than last night. What did you think the difference was? Um, I, I think they came out uh, way – They well, they've come out aggressive in all, of, all three of the games, but they really made shots tonight. Uh, we we're very fortunate to get this W. Um, and I'm just thankful we were making shots as well. But um, – you know, it's a young group. They don't run out of any energy. And, uh, you know, you have to execute and, and, and really simplify and, and, and stay true to your principles. You know, we, we gave up a ton in transition. Um, we turned the ball over. Couldn't get a defensive rebound at times. It's just, you know. But, again, when you're able to score the ball, it covers up for a lot of mistakes. But we can't depend on that night in and night out. We got to hang our hats on our defense. And San Antonio is a good, hungry, young bunch. That's you know they're going through a transition as an organization. But believe you me, what their core values are, this team will be back to where it once was here pretty soon. Um, and with us, we just again we have to really understand what we want our identity to be. And um, it's got to be defense. It's got to be making winning, you know, playing winning basketball and, and having winning habits. You got a couple guys going offensively. Uh, you alluded to Shooter in the first half, so you need to find a rhythm. And then LeBron uh, gets up to seven threes made and the, the free throw line hitting everything. Uh, what did you see from on that end and how, how key could that be to get those guys going? I mean, we just got whenever we play with pace and we move the ball from side to side. Um, and we're attacking, we're in attack mode, and we're not selling, and we're playing downhill. I mean, good things are going to happen. And, you know, guys kind of separate, separate themselves in different segments of the game in which you can play through, whether it's uh, trying to get an isolation or trying to play a two-man game or involving three guys. But um, we had different guys step up during different segments of the game, had some guys make some big threes for us, timely threes. And so uh, I thought it was good. You know, guys, uh, a lot of guys contributed. Darwin, we start the trip with Pat Bev stepping in for Austin, and tonight we have LeBron stepping in when Russ is bleeding. Just as a coach, what did you make of, of that sequence to see LeBron step in there and then expanding it to see their on-court chemistry as well with that double alley-oop? I mean, it, though, you're talking about two hall, first ballot Hall of Fame players, man, that, that, that know how to play the game of basketball, to understand when it's played the right way. They know how to play it. Um, 
and the highly competitive individuals, both on and off the floor. Um, and I just, you know, at the end of the day, again, those three key words, competitiveness, togetherness, and accountability. And that's that's what togetherness looks like. Being there for your teammate, he takes a shot to the head and, you know, and, you know, you don't want to escalate the situation. You want to try to calm him down. You got a guy with blood all over his face that's underst- who's understandably u- upset and just having Brian there and it just it shows a brotherhood that, that we, we need that type of that image, that action, that belief in one another. We need that to represent us as a team and as a franchise. Well, speaking about LeBron, what about his play? He did miss a free throw, 39 after having, as I said last night, a thousand turnovers, and he was he was he was, but he was so good on the court as well. What do you think about the way he's played tonight? I just, you know, it doesn't take him long to get back in rhythm. You know, and he he had some tough stretches last night, nine turnovers or whatnot. But as I mentioned after the game last night, I'm not worried about him. He's one of the best ever at uh, self-correcting. And I thought he knew where he wanted to get his shots from. He knew what type of actions he wanted to be in. You know, I myself tried to put him in different type of actions from different angles. Um, but nah, he was phenomenal. I'm happy to see he got 10 free throw attempts. Um, he had been all year. He's been driving downhill, and just because you know he plays with a ton of physicality, and it's hard for people to really knock him off his route. It doesn't mean that he's not getting fouled. So I'm just just happy he was able to get there um, for 10 attempts. And we need him to be aggressive, and we need to be smart, um, and just understand that you know a lot of the time, a lot of times this season, like AD. As he goes, we're going to go. And so he was very vocal, coaching up his teammates, you know, suggesting different actions um, and executing on both sides. Uh, Darvin, you talked a lot about in rebound, then find another body, put your body on his, and, and then also, you know, not losing cutters, not losing guys on defense off ball um, tonight. Um, 17 offensive rebounds for the Spurs, even though they're missing some of their best big guys at the end, and then um, back cut a bunch. What what has to change there, especially, especially kind of keeping track of when you're on defense of guys kind of flying out off ball? I just think, you know, with, with the lack of practice time, you know, you try to watch as much film as you can, but the guys are just, they know what we're expecting. They know what we need from them. Um, they know what we need to do to win games. They know what we need to do to be at a high level defensively. And it's just a matter of going back to the drawing board. We'll have tomorrow off, probably have a shoot around on Monday, um, look at some film on ourselves as we prepare for Indiana. But also, you know, address some of the, some of those things. And, and, and Tuesday, hopefully, be able to get on the practice floor, obviously, with limited, if no contact at all, um, and talk about those things, you know, those, those areas, the things, again, self-inflicted wounds, things that we can control, how good we are in transition defense, um, keeping guys in front of us, not letting teams play downhill against us, being great contesting shots without fouling, um, defensive rebounding and, and offensively not turning the ball over and making sure we have too many good offensively talented players to just turn it over at this rate um, and not really make sure that we get a good look every time down. And turnovers are going to happen. I'm not the big turnover coach. They're going to happen. But they have to be competitive turnovers, not just non force to silly errors. So we'll get better. And, you know, it's just what we 18 games in now, 64 games left. We got some time, but, you know, time is of the essence at the same time, and, and we plan to get better for sure. Thanks, Coach. Yeah.